Exercise 13 is also looking at the camera solve, but we're going to be taking a look at how we do parallax camera solves. So here's our shot. Well, let's uh, finish this playing through. It's uh, quite a, a straightforward little uh, crane shot going on. So there's a little bit of motion coming in as the camera moves a bit higher and moves over to either the left or the right, always moves over to the right. Perfect. So what we want to do is we want to track this shot here so we can put some objects in the water. Now, if we take a look at the water, water itself is a um, an absolute pain to track uh, with, a, with a planar tracker. In fact, reflections themselves are an absolute pain to track anyway, because, I mean, look at it. It's just sort of floating around, wibbly wobbly all over the place. It's uh, There's no real sort of static um, texture to come in and, uh, and base our track off. So we're gonna do a camera solve on this one instead. Whereas to get a pan, tilt and zoom uh, camera solve, we only needed one shape that went over uh, a number of different planes. When we're dealing with a moving camera and we're solving for parallax motion, what we have to do is we have to uh, think about planes again uh, and, tr and track individual planes. What we can't do is we can't create shapes that, uh, that go over a whole wide range of depths. Um, here, this is going to be a, a perfect planar track if I wanted to stick something on the wall or I wanted to change the wall up a little bit. That's going to be an absolutely fine planar track but it really doesn't have uh, that, that much use as a, um, as a track to help solve my camera because it's going over a whole wide range of, uh, of depths there. So instead, what I'm gonna do is create a number of smaller shapes. So I'll create one here. Uh, and this really is a, uh, when we're doing solving for parallax cameras, it's it usually the case of less is more. So the fewer good tracks we can get in, and let's take another one over here, uh, the better. And something in this distance, it's not gonna shear off. I'm gonna just take the uh, translation scale and rotation. Over here on this one, I'm gonna track perspective in. Let's label these up. I will call this one wall front. I will call this one building back and we need a minimum of two shapes tracked in to solve the uh, the relative motion of the camera so let's check that these shapes are or let's check the surfaces are nice and accurate turn the tracking on that tracking off on that and that's looking all right let's have a little scrub through that's doing what it's doing. And there seems to be a little problem with the wall over here. Well, there did seem to be a problem with that wall track there. Uh, not quite sure what the problem was. So let's just uh, retrack that. And we'll set that one to auto channel. And we'll just quickly uh, track that through again. And that's looking a bit better now, so let's uh, come in. I'll call this one wall track again. Yeah, let's come into our camera solve and see what we've, uh, we've got here. So have those both selected. And if we're just dealing with something where there's actually quite a small uh, amount of movement in the camera, there's not a lot of uh, translation going up, then small parallax change is the one for you. So this could be something where there's just a small amount of movement uh, if there's larger movement, then we use the uh, the large parallax change here. We don't have zooming on the camera. We've got a fixed focal length between 35 and 70 mil. Let's solve that up and see what we can do. And out of those two, we've now got a solve quality of 99%. So let's export our camera data and see if it really is as good as that. Copy that to the clipboard. And now we're in After Effects, so we can come up to edit paste mocha camera again and this will again give us um, our camera 
whichever hit U, we can now see that um, it's now a camera in motion. So it's moving. It's also got X, Y, and Z rotation, but the zoom is constant because we have a fixed focus lens on it, on the camera that is. And we also have now a t grand total of 10 null objects. Uh, so Moco generates up five nulls per uh, layer or per surface uh, to give us an idea of, of where different, where the surface is sitting in relation to, uh, to the footage. So what I like to do is just come in and just take those groups of five and just color code them so I know exactly where things are. Uh, and let's just check to make sure that this is working out okay. We'll create a test foreground here. And well, let's turn this into a 3D layer. Let's find the position of one of these here. So let's take this one here, hit P to bring out the position. You can see there's no other keyframes on it. There's just that, that first frame because it is a uh, solves for, for static. And let's paste that in there. Okay, well actually let's, let's hide this one second because I just want to show you, if I hit spacebar, just want to show you that we should test out these um, these null objects because the nulls really are there to, uh, to give us an idea whether the camera solve is, has worked. So if these are static, but they're moving around in the uh, in the frame, then we've got ourselves a problem. We have to go back and retract things. But if they're static in comparison to the footage, then that's a good indication that we've got a decent uh, track going on. So let's come in. I've now pasted using uh, command V, just pasted that uh, position up from the null. I will need to scale this down to get it looking a little bit more in scale. I can use a little widget on the UI just to, to place that in. Let's play that back. And that's looking fairly steady in terms of, uh, of what the camera is doing. Let's move that over a little bit. Maybe scale it down and we'll do another one. I'll call this one test background. Lovely. And we'll take one of the background positions here. Copy that with command C or control C. And yeah, that's test background there. We'll scale that down to the same Or better turn that into 3D space actually and paste that data back in again. There we go. Round preview that out. And those are sitting fine relative to where we were where we we're after. So we want to take things a bit further. We want to get the measurement of where things are sitting. So we want something else relative to the boat. What we can do if we can't get it by eye and we want it like properly done. We can just track in a bit more of the boat. Let's take just the uh, little bit of the windows there. Because it's so far in the distance, nothing else is gonna really matter apart from translation. Let's call this one boat track. And quickly track that in. Cool, and so now let's go back into our camera solve, select all three layers here. Yeah, the more layers you have, the um, longer it does take to generate up a solution. So, so again, this, this is a case of often less is more. Okay, here's something that's quite interesting. Uh, and I'm going to make a, a separate um, composition because I want to show you something here. I'm going to come in, I'm going to paste my Mocha camera again. And let's just do the same thing by color as uh, we did before, just color code those different nulls up a little bit. So that's done in brown, it's a little bit 
the same. There we go. Cool. So checking these out, they're looking, they're looking all right. And let's just hit you on here again. So we do have the same relative motion. Everything's tracked in nicely, but check out the position on the camera. It's 960 by 540 and the Z depth is minus 1990. We come over here, open up the camera here and the position on the camera is 960 by 540 and the Z depth is 1920.3. Now this is actually quite, uh, quite close, but you can find if you solve a camera again, just with a uh, one more added, uh, added layer in there, you can get a significant, uh, significantly different uh, camera position here so that means that you know if I were to just copy and paste our uh, test background and foreground from one composition to the other it's not going to sit in exactly the same position I think in this case it's going to be close enough but let's copy with con command C or control C and paste that in there So now we can see that the scale is completely off just by that, that small change. You can see that's definitely not fitting in very nicely at all. So let's find something in the background there. Copy and paste. Again, the scale is completely off. Bring that up to eight. And that's fitting in a bit better. And we'll take one more, just duplicate that up and take one more from the boat's point of view or, or relative to the boat. So copy, paste. Just reposition that close to the water change that color to blue and that's sat in there nicely now cool I hope that gives you a uh, an idea of how you can start to use the Mocha's camera solver to uh, to solve for shots with a, uh, a moving camera and just some of the gotchas that you're going to be facing uh, when you start using it in exercise 14, we're going to be doing our last little look at the camera solve and seeing how we can add an additional element to it when it comes to tracking moving elements in 3D space.